Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. What we're going to talk about in this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is race car simulation when things don't go to plan. What do we mean about when things don't go to plan? Well, from time to time in your careers, you're going to be presented with race data that simply does not add up. You'll be looking at race data, you'll be processing it through the various chassis sim toolboxes, and it just doesn't look right. There'll be things that are out of calibration, etc., etc. When that happens, don't panic because it will happen. And if you think it won't happen to you, you're definitely in the wrong business. However, the good news is that we're going to show you some strategies about how to do about um, how to deal with it, and we're going to show you some strategies in terms of how to get something and how to get something out of it. And indeed, this has actually been um, motivated uh, by some recent experiences that I've had, and I figured I learned quite a bit from it. So I'm going to take this opportunity to share it with all of you. So what we're going to do is let's have a look at this particular bit of data from a um, high downforce um, open wheeler slash sports car. Now, let's have a look at the data here. We've got wheel speed, we've got our damper positions at the front, we've got our damper positions at the rear, we've got our steered angle, and we've got our G-force lat. Now, there's a problem here. Now, I'm gonna give everyone just about 10 or 20 seconds to think, to think to see if they can figure it out and I'll be back with you very shortly. Okay, for those of you who um, haven't picked up on it, there's a big problem here. Let's have a look at what um, our damper positions are saying. Okay, at the fronts and the rears, there's not an awful lot of difference. It's about 0.2 of a mil difference at the front, there's approximately about a mil to a maybe 0.3 of a mil difference at the rear. Let's have a look at our at our lateral G. It's pulling 0.7 of a G, and we're here. We're looking at very at differences maybe between 0.3 to one millimeter for quite a bit of lateral loading. When you see a situation like that, that's when a flag needs to go up and go. Oh, hang on, we've got a problem here now. Don't panic. This is actually, uh, 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 you've got a couple of different strategies for actually, uh, for actually dealing with this. Your first strategy is to go through and basically, and basically apply, uh, and basically apply uh, is basically apply an offset. Now, to give you an idea of um, just how far off this data, you can see that I actually already applied an offset, but even then we're still getting that sort of a deal. If you have a situation like that and your lateral G sensor isn't um, relied upon, don't panic. Let's have a look at the quality of our damper data here. The quality of our damper data here is actually pretty reasonable. Now, what I would be doing if I were you is, um, and particularly for the uh, uh, particularly for engineering students who are looking at this, I'd almost create um, a little function in either Ma uh, a little function in MATLAB that could take a car setup and um, uh, rear damper data because the problem with taking it from the front is the fact that the problem with um, the front damper positions is particularly particularly for most high downforce open wheelers because the rear bar is usually set so tight the problem is that getting it from the uh, get, uh, inferring lateral g from the front damper positions usually is a uh, usually can be a little bit challenging however we, we have quite a bit of movement at the rear. So that basically means we've got some good, reliable data that we can take this from. So you can go through and infer some lateral, um, uh, uh, some, uh, lateral G data um, at the rear. Now, obviously, if you're looking at using things like the chassis sim arrow toolbox, the one touch arrow modeling, obviously it's going to need the lateral G sensor to determine what's the difference are between the corners and the straights. Obviously, looking at this data, we're going to have some difficulties in this. If you are presented with this deal, don't panic. There are some, actually, there are some really, really, really easy workarounds. Now, the first easy workaround that you can do is what I like to do is I like to take basically a bit of clean data from one of the fastest points in the circuit. So this is particularly a, um, uh, this is particularly 
a fast bit of the circuit. And what I will do at this point is that I'm going to go through and I'm going to do an arrow hand calc in terms of CLA or downforce, CDA drag, and arrow balance, just to get sort of a rough rule of thumb to go, right, this is what I should be expecting at this particular instant. Now, to quote the Joker from the Dark, uh, uh, to quote the Joker from the Batman and the Dark Knight, I'm going to show you a little bit of a magic trick. What I do is I'm going to pull up an arrow map that is similar to what I would be expecting from the actual card. Now, in this particular instance, I've pulled up the GP2 2011 map. Now, here's the key. What I'll typically have is if I go to and bring up another instance of chassis, Sam, I'm just going to minimize both windows just to show you um, uh, what, uh, just to show you what I uh, uh, what I do here. So let's just say that this is my car template with a very very similar arrow map, and this is another car temp. Uh, then this is my actual car uh, car file. So what I'll do is I'll bring up my arrow map, and I'm going to go to the downforce drag and arrow balance quick start. So what I do is this is um, my template car. This is the car I've been. Uh, this is the car I'm actually working on. And what I'll do is I'll fill in the appropriate right height bounds and the appropriate um, bits of the arrow uh, and the arrow map. Then I'm going to click on OK. What that's going to do is that's going to basically set a unity arrow map. Then all I've got to do is I'll go to edit downforce right height arrow map and here is basically my downforce arrow map and you'll see here I've got a little function here called export text arrow file. So I can click on that and I, what I can go through is I can export that arrow map out and then I can import it into here using the import text arrow file. Is it perfect? No, it isn't. But just remember, one of the things that I've always taught about race car simulation, the most important thing in the world is to get going. Just remember, you take a broad brush stroke first, then you narrow in. If you try and go the other way, you'll be forever caught in the loop. Now, what I'll do is once I've got that, so say this is my actual car, car file that I'll, working, uh, that I'll work on, is I'll load in a pretty rough circuit map, uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll load in my rough circuit map, and then what I'll do is I will click on the rear wing, and I'll tune in my CLA and my CDA maximum, my arrow balance offset, to um, get a sort of a rough fit. Just to show you what that sort of a rough fit looks like. This is the black is some simulated data. The actual colored is the actual data. And as you can see, this is basically the end result of me going through and applying some arrow uh, and um, applying some arrow balance um, offsets. Is what we're talking about here perfect? No, it isn't. But the important thing is that let's just say that if we had some data that didn't match up, what we've done is we've made what little uh, we've made the best of what we've got to get ourselves in the ballpark so at least we can get going is it perfect no it isn't but just remember half of the battle that you're going to face with race car simulation is to actually get going in the first place and little techniques like this can be an absolute godsend to when you actually do get the right data so you're not actually starting from a blank sheet of paper so let's review So, summary of our strategies. If the, lateral, if the lateral acceleration plot is out, try offsetting it. Another strategy is you reverse engineer it from your damper data. And if the toolboxes don't work, we hand calc the data to get our arrow. Then we choose an equivalent arrow map and dial in. As much as this may seem incredible, uh, as much as this may seem incredibly approximate, just remember our challenge. The first challenge we face with race car simulation is to get going, which is one of the things that we really hammer home in the chassis sim quick start guides. Is you start from a car that is close to your data, and then you basically refine and you tune in because you get no brownie points for reinventing the wheel. But even though you might be presented with some bad data, at least using these strategies, you can get something out of it. And then when you actually do get some good data, you're, in a, uh, you're actually not starting from a clean sheet of paper. You've actually got something to lean on. And that is absolutely priceless for getting you up to speed. I hope you've got something out of this and we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.